Well, as part of the federal government's effort to further breach the country's metering gap and also cushion the effect of the service reflective tariff, SBT, on electricity consumers in Nigeria, it launched the National Mass Metering Program in October last year. This week, the Central Bank of Nigeria dispersed 14.35 billion naira to the distribution companies of Nigeria to cover the procurement of 263,860 meters. Well, joining us now to speak on the effectiveness of the program so far and the capping of estimated billing regulations of the Nigeria Electricity Regulation, Regulatory Commission is the National Secretary of Nigeria Electricity Consumers Advocacy Network, Uket Obonga. Uket, glad to have you join us on The Morning Show. Let's Thank start. Thank you very much. Fine. Let's Thank start this way. What do you make of this disbursement of 14.35 uh, million, uh, billion, I guess? How far reaching is it towards billion. solving yeah, billion, solving this problem? How far reaching is it? Well, thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, to begin with, um, we have to commend the federal government for taking this initiative. Uh, we have cried out loud over the past years, appealing to the federal government to intervene because it became obvious, even from the complaints of the discourse, that they don't have the capacity to meter electricity consumers. And now that the federal government has uh, taken the bull by the horns, we are grateful. We thank Mr. President and those who advised him accordingly to do that. Yes, the meter is the only instrument that measures electricity re received or supplied and electricity consumed. So there is no way we can continue with the estimated bill, billing because it has been abused by the discourse. They saw it as the low-hanging fruit that they can reach out and pluck without any effort. So to us consumers, uh, we believe that the right step, the right thing to do is what Mr. President has ordered through the CBN. Yes, they say they are deploying uh, they, are, they have set aside, or the central bank is, uh, is giving the discourse 14 point something billion for 263,860 meters. Correct. Well, considering the metering gap in the market, uh, we'll say that uh, is a very insignificant uh, number, but we have to start somewhere. Now, the discourse are to assess this money, procure meters, and give to consumers out there. But the problem we are having is that, we now have is that, nobody seems to be monitoring what the discos are doing. Because we have evidence and reports outside there that these meters that were launched sometime last year, November or December, December precisely, some discos are using it under the MAP scheme. What do I mean? There were customers who paid for these meters. Mm. And when these free meters came, according to what we are told, rather than give out these meters free, some are installing these meters and using it, giving it out to cons cons uh, consumers who had earlier on paid for meters under the meter asset provider scheme. So what the federal government should do and the CBN should do is to compel the regulator neck to wind down on map. Let them draw a line. All those who pay for meters under map, it should be the responsibility of the map, uh, 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 the meter asset providers to meter them for the money they have collected from them. Then these free meters under the national mass metering program of the federal government through the CBN, they should draw a line. Let the meters be given out to the people who deserve them. Not selling. We are told in some discourses, some areas, that they are compelling consumers to pay 50,000 for single phase and 90,000 for the three phase meters. And yet, we are told these meters are giving out, are supposed to be giving out to the uh, to Nigerians free. 
Um, that is one thing. The second Mr. thing Bonga, is that sorry, I need to, um, I need to cut in. I, uh, Mr. Bonga, I need to ask you this question now. Um, you talked about um, those who deserve them. How do we categorize those who deserve them? Fine. How do we categorize those who deserve them? Mm. There are people who have, who had had meters before, and these meters went bad, malfunctioned, the discos, they reported the matters to the discos, and the discos, respective discos, went and dismantled the meters. They took them out and placed them on estimated bill. They should be the first priority. They should be given the priority in this scheme. They should because the discos will tell them, well, we cannot meter you, and that is why. Because if they bring the meter and mount it there, the cost of uh, electricity the fellow is paying for will, will be lower than what he is giving on the estimated bill. Because the so-called, we shall get to capping, the so-called estimated bill before this time and uh, now does not follow the former methodology for estimated billing, which neck repeal for whatever reason and came up with, cap, with a cap. Then, like a disco is doing, I think about, about on disco, they have segmented it. We are moving from one particular area to another area. So if they have done that, they should make sure that they do it this way, so that all Nigerians who are non metered who are on estimated billing, who are complaining of the crazy bills given to them each month, will have a sigh of relief. All right. Uh, quite interesting. Uh, okay, with a 6.5 million deficits of meet, meters nationwide, what is it that the government is not doing right to get this fixed? What more do you think that they can do? Well, thank you very much. You talked of 6.5 million yeah. meeting gap. Deficits, yes. I'm sorry to disappoint you because that is not true. As we speak, Nigeria does not know, does not, we don't have accurate data of the consumer population or the customer population in Nigeria. What do I mean? Let me go back to what I will call a sing song. I have repeatedly said it in various fora. In 2006, there was national population census, housing census, and housing distribution by electricity electricity under the old NEPA put the consumer population or the customer population at 10.4 million. Go back to 2005, National Bureau of Statistics uh, figures for 2005, third quarter or so, he put the uh, population at 9.8 million. Those consuming now, electricity? When privatization exercise was done, they used 5.2 million. And in the same document, you find out that under MITRE 2 or MITRE 2.1, that a subclass of RO2 uh, or was put at 7 million, 7.06 million. How do you reconcile that? That tells you clearly that we don't know, we don't have the figure, the data they are pushing out there is not correct. Now you go to NEC website, NEC will tell you that we, there are about 12 million. Then, 12 million Nigerians captured or active or whatever you want to call them, who are in electricity, 12 million. Now, the discos themselves, through their spokesman, will tell you that they are over 20 million. So, we don't know, we don't know precisely how many. So, what is the way out? The federal government of Nigeria, if they want to really do this thing properly, should go back and conduct a customer enumeration nationwide. Mm -hmm. We have opportunity with National Population Commission that can be engaged and empowered to do that. So to solve the problem of the metering gap, we must know the number of Nigerians using electricity. If the discourse tell you over 20 million are using electricity, and NET tells you 12 million are using electricity, we have a gap of 8 million. Now this is the 8 million gap that is there. But they are telling you they have metered so, so, so number of people, and which we know because we're in the field. We were somewhere in a disco, and we enumerated 360 houses. And we discovered that 
out of the 360 houses they say they metered, they all dysfunctional meters of old NEPA that are not being read, they are just hanging there. Those black analog meters, they are still hanging there. They form part of the figure, the number of meters that the disco is pushing that they have done. They will tell you we have metered 47 percent. What percentage of these dysfunctional meters that are not being read and the customers are deliberately placed on estimated billing? Mm. Form that 47 percent or 40 percent they are talking about. So we need to go in there and get these things right. That is the only way we can get it right. Interrogate how many Nigerians are in electricity, how many people are actually meters. Unfortunately, we have a neck that does not have the capacity to do this. Not because they are not willing to do that, but because they are not, you know, structured. The structure is not there for them to function and operate effectively. Right. You can't put less than 200, 300 people in Abuja here, man in the office here, and about 90-something uh, <coughs> or so, or 100 in uh, state capitals to man uh, their forum offices, and you think they'll be able to do it. No, it's not possible. They lack the capacity. And that is why the federal government, as the federal government has stepped in in this metering exercise, they should go further to do what? To conduct a national customer enumeration exercise. All right. Indeed. And um, looking at the figure for the procurement of the meters, um, 263,000, just about above that, um, really. Um, how effective or challenging will disbursing these meters be for, for the entire population? Well, uh, the question is there. <laughs> it's so open. Nobody needs to tell you. We are talking of a 6 million metering gap. And you are bringing 263,860. What percentage of that? Uh, what percentage is that of uh, you know compared to to the to the six million you are talking about? 14 billion uh, naira is set aside by the federal government for the discos. Mm. So you see, it shows very clearly that we don't really have a proper understanding of what is going on in the sector. Because before you talk of the metering gap, you must know the people who are in the sector who are using electricity. You must know those who are accurately, properly metered, who are functional meters. Forget about what the discos are filing to NEC in quarterly report. We have metered this. We have metered that. We have met no. The NEC itself, we still go back to NEC because of lack of capacity to reach out, monitor, and evaluate. That is why we find ourselves in this, uh, uh, in this, pro in this problem. All right. Uh, so oh. what we need to do is to do the needful. If the federal government, there are so many uh, civil society organizations, non-governmental, non-government, uh, you know, actors out there. Recently, we carried out a survey in some states to find out the so-called uh, hours of supply, whether they are complying with. We discovered that it is fake. It is, it is safe. All right. Only okay. areas okay. like Abuja Disco yeah, and okay. a few others that are complying. <coughs> and are not. Okay, I'm going to keep you on pause. When we come back, we will continue our interesting discussion. Look at Obonga Consumers Advocacy Network. Stay Thank with you. us. <laughs> Well, in case you just joined the morning show, we have National Secretary of the Nigeria Electricity Consumers Advocacy Network, Oket Obonga. He's been discussing with us on the challenges we have in the electricity industry. Oket, uh, let's talk briefly for a moment about the SBT, the service-based tariff. How effective, really, has it been in the electricity <coughs> supply chain, uh, which took effect from 1st September 2020? Is it abiding, is it adding value to the consumption of electricity? If not, what to do? Well, thank you very much once again. The service-based tariff, which was introduced recently uh, by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, is intended to make electricity consumers who are consuming more electricity to pay more. But the question is that, is, it what is, is that what is happening? Like I said, we were in some few states, and we are continuing after maybe a, a, in, in few weeks' time, to sample opinion of Nigerians in, various lo in some locations. And we discovered that, number one, 
consumers were, were, were placed on particular uh, bands do not belong to that band. Consumers, they will tell you a particular area is supplied 20 hours of electricity, minimum, minimum. But the consumers who are living there, operating there, doing business there, when we reached out to them, they say, no, we have not even seen light for the past how many weeks. At the end of the month, they are made to pay. The service ban tariff gave the discourse the uh, authority, the order, the authority to do what? Migrate even customers who were not supposed to be in certain customer classes. For instance, the low voltage maximum demand customers. For you to fall under such customer classification, the regulation says you must, you must, your consumption KVA must not be less than 45. But we have cases where people of 10, 15, <coughs> 20, 25, below 40, have been migrated into this service-based tariff. Now, you hear them say, or if you look at the service-based tariff, you look at it, you see that in a, like Abuja, for instance, those who are living in Lokogoma and are enjoying just but about 12 hours or 18 hours of supply or 20 hours of supply, they are on 220 units. Those in Maraba, Masaka, Bagualada, and so forth, who are, according to them, are not receiving or supplied 12 <coughs> hours or so of electricity, they group them. If AEDC here is doing the right thing because from our little survey so far, it is only AEDC and one or two discos that are really complying. A co disco. But go out there. This is giving an incentive to some of these discos to behave the way they like, to show up revenue collection without commensurate supply of power to the affected customers. Ooh. We were somewhere, let me cite Cross Rusty for uh, as an example. Mm. You go to the Portaco disco. Uh, bands, service-based uh, tariff bans. They say a place like Ecom is under eight hours, minimum eight hours. And you put a call to the place. You call people there. They will tell you for the past two, three weeks, we have not seen electricity. And at the end of the month, they are going to be charged. So who monitors? The number of hours. How do we know that they are really supplying this so-called number of hours that are in that service base, uh, uh, in those bands? Well, the people in the community... Does NEC in the have the capacity to be... monitor this? <clears throat> yeah. In That's the various true. communities, is it only the uh, state capitals where these things are done? What of the millions of Nigerians in rural areas? Mm. Who monitors what goes in the, on there? So to me... <clears throat> That is another fluke. That is another fraud mm. in the power sector. Mr. Bonga, let's look yes, at another issue now. If the estimated um, billing regulations yes. of NERC came into effect last year, precisely on the 1st of February, how compliant have they been? They said they have repealed in February last year, 2020, they repealed methodology for estimating bills. And they came up with a regulation on what they now call capping estimated billing or bills. Now, we have evidence. We have reached out to electricity consumers, not in the cities of Abuja and Lagos, but in rural areas even in some suburban areas in major cities. And we discover that a few discos are complying with that estimated bill. Like I said somewhere, we had a program in Kaduna. And when I brought out the next chart on this estimated billing, somebody right in the audience, he brought out a bill. And said, sir, but you say I am supposed to build on 174. But look at what I have here, it's 520 something. 
NEC amended it last year, amended uh, the capping, uh, capping of estimated bill, and gave it to them because they were complaining. But I'm telling you, up till this moment, so many of the discos are not compliant. Where you have a compliance level is in areas where you have, say, cosmopolitan cities. But go out there to Nigerians. Is that what is happening? What I'm saying, I'm talking on national television. If you challenge me, I have bills. Bills, we have bills to show and prove that that is what is going on. Mm. Okay, interesting. Why is this so? Nobody is monitoring, nobody is evaluating, nobody is supervising, nobody is interested. NEC does not have the capacity. Regulating the power sector is not all about churning out regulations and others. You must have to build a capacity to monitor and supervise what is going on there. We have a situation where we have a regulator that is dependent on the regulated for data. It's sad. That's odd. That's sad. Your word against... The regulator is dependent on the regulated for Ve data. Very sad. Your word against the... And you think the... you make headway? Yeah, your word against the regulator... Uh... I'm sure they will have one or two things to say, but, but quite interesting. Now, let's talk about uh, the Siemens $2 billion power deal under the Presidential Power Initiative PPI. Uket, uh, this will save the nation more than $1 billion annually and expand the electricity capacity from 4,500 megawatts to 25,000 megawatts. That must be music to your ears and the ears of Nigeria. Do you see this solving Nigeria's electricity woes? It is going to give us a major boost. I pray the German, comp the German government that gave that grant and they were wise enough to <coughs> put in uh, Siemens to implement and execute it will stand their grounds. Keep off, if that project will succeed, keep off. Take away politics from it. Remove politics. Don't, I use this opportunity to appeal to the German company, the Siemens, not to allow themselves to be bombarded by politicians who want tomorrow, people who don't know anything about electricity, they have never, uh, 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 you know, designed, constructed any project and constructed it effectively to the satisfaction, to standard, they should not be brought in because the moment you are now asking government, ministry officials, politicians to nominate contractors, the next thing is that they rush to a corporate affairs commission and, um, and register companies, fake companies. And that will be the beginning of the failure of that project. We hope not. Women should look out for Nigerians and companies that are bound in this country, that are competent, that are capable, that have the capacity, the knowledge, the, the experience, and engage them. That is the only way. Yes. When you put in $2 billion to expand the infrastructure, we have a transmission uh, a, a, a network that cannot carry. Why is it that the, the Genkos will tell you we have capacity to generate 8,000 megawatts? And the TCN, who is, of, so, uh, who is conveying, filling this electricity to the discos, when you give them any load that is higher than what they can carry, you have system collapse. So it is a welcome development that Siemens is intervening. But they have to be very careful not to allow politicians to corrupt the system, because that will be the beginning of failure. And the important question will be, can politics really be removed from this project? Electricity has nothing to do with politics. Electricity has to do with competence, expertise, people who are willing. Why are we in this mess? Why are we in this mess? We are in this mess because politics played a role in the privatization exercise of 2013, we have countries like Kenya, we have Ethiopia, we have Uganda, we have Ghana, we have other countries all over the world who travel this road of privatization. And it is working in their climbs. Why is it not working here? It's not working because when politicians throw their cronies, took over our national assets without 
the financial capacity, the managerial capacity, the technical capacity. That is why we are in this mess. I'm sorry to say, some of these discourse that are even manned, I'm talking on national television, and I have no apology. Some of these discourse that are manned by some of these foreigners are doing better. I said clearly. All right, uh, let me see if I can so leave you with this question. Electricity must be separated from politics. May I use this opportunity to appeal to Mr. President? Mm -hmm. He should seek out competent men and women who can do it. Nigerians are doing it. A Nigerian is the advisor to the government of Ghana on transmission. A Nigerian. He can be brought back here to do that. A Nigerian. Yeah, he, he can Who be. Who knows him? We can bring him. Maybe, okay, that's because why. Because of politics and where he comes from, <coughs> nobody. The moment we put aside politics and go for merit and competence, we'll get it right. Mm. And that's our prayer, that we get it right. Uh, probably that's why this is the Siemens uh, uh, contract deal is connected directly to the president. It's a presidential uh, initiative. We we'll hope that politics doesn't come to torpedo uh, that particular deal, and Nigerians can afterwards smile concerning electricity. Uket Obonga, thank you so much for being on The Morning Show. I was almost saying Newsday. <laughs>